it's Wednesday in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and uh, the Bible calls us aliens. <laughs> we may become illegal aliens before it's all over. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, let me just share with you the reason that we're called aliens in the scripture is that uh, we are following a way that is alien to the world. Uh, we don't fit into this world that we live around. And that was even true back during Jesus' day and even before that. But how would we become illegal aliens? Well, it's quite interesting. If you read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, you'll find that term, aliens. He addresses his letter to the aliens, the Christians that were scattered over a lot of different regions. And he tells us to grow in respect to our salvation. That is, it's not enough just to be saved and satisfied, but we need to be growing in our walk with Jesus. In chapter 2, verse 13, he says, submit to the institutions around us. Now that creates somewhat of a dilemma. What happens when the institutions around us are in conflict with God's word? It's not addressed here in this particular section, but there has to be that overriding principle that God's way is above all other ways. Nevertheless, he tells us to submit to every institution for the Lord's sake. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, he defines uh, husbands and wives. Not husbands and husbands, or wives and wives. And not Adam and Steve, but Adam and Eve. And so we, we see this. But in chapter 3, verses 8 through 12, he says, suffering is coming. I've heard stories that several men in Canada have literally been arrested for preaching against homosexuality and that it's called a hate crime. Even though there was no hate in their words, even though they don't hate homosexuals but just hate the sin, if during prohibition and uh, uh, suffrage and all of those things we were to say that those things were hate, uh, would we be in the same shape we're in today? I don't think so. Nevertheless, in verse 12 of chapter 3, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and he attends their prayers. i got to say that it's time for Christians to begin to pray, to recognize the separation of church and state. We can't prevent the government from saying that it's okay for men and women to marry like kind or uh, people of the same gender. But we should be able to, according to the Constitution, be able to deny uh, the fact that we will have to do it. Uh, for it pushes us outside of our freedom of speech and it pushes us outside of our freedom of faith. And if our convictions are so strongly that we believe that it's wrong, we ought to be able to continue to oppose uh, those people that would try to force us to do same-sex marriages, to rent our facilities to those that want to perform same-sex marriages. Don't think it's not a hot issue. Uh, every state in the union now has been having lawyers draw up paperwork on how does a church and how does a pastor protect himself from being forced into doing something that they believe is wrong in God's eyes. I wonder what would happen if a pastor was forced to do a marriage of a man to a man or a woman to a woman and when he got to the part that's traditional in every wedding ceremony does anybody see reason why this couple should not be joined if the pastor stepped out of the pulpit and said I do I see reason why they shouldn't be joined God's Word says that it's wrong <laughs> I wonder how many times we'd be asked to do a wedding if we did that or, or if we said uh, according to the laws of this country, but against everything that I believe God says in his word, I pronounce you husband and wife. Terrible, isn't it? We're already aliens in this world because our standards are not the world's standards. Soon we have become illegal aliens because we break the law of the land in order to follow a higher law, the laws of God. In chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Keep a good conscience. 
it's better to suffer for what is right than to suffer for what is wrong. Today's pastors and churches may have to suffer for what is right because it is wrong. That's your thought for the day. I hope you'll pray for your pastors. I hope you'll pray for your churches. Not that we should hate homosexuality as it relates to people, but as it relates to God's Word. Don't hate the people, but you can hate the sin. You can hate the sin of drinking. You can hate the sin of smoking. You can hate the sin of lots of other things and never be put in jail. But it appears if you hate the sin of homosexuality, you may well wind up in jail. Again, that's your thought for the day. Have a great day.